was with. And my father, listen, I, I have to say, I'm just a bag of nerves. I am like, tomorrow, tomorrow is meant to be the day where we're heading away from this pandemic. You know, we, we've been stressed off my head enough in this shed over the last year, year and two months, whatever it is. But I'm just saying to you tomorrow, let it happen. I don't want to hear of your man in the toy with the same haircut as myself saying, hold the phone. I don't want to hear that I've held for him for the last 14 months. I want to hear where we can go, what we can do, and when we can do it. That's all I want. <laughs> Speaking for the nation, yes, that was comedian Rory O'Connor, also known, of course, as Rory Stories, and he's carved out an incredible career from his massive social media following. But today he's joining us for a different reason. Yep, it's Asthma Awareness Week. It started yesterday, and Rory O'Connor is one of the 380,000 people in Ireland living with the condition. And he's here to share his story with us. And he's joined this morning by respiratory consultant and medical director of the Asthma Society of Ireland, Professor Marcus Butler. Gentlemen, Good morning to you both and thanks for being with us. Rory, you have kept us entertained for many years on social media. For that, we are very thankful and also thankful that you're here today to share your story as we um, enter into Asthma Awareness Week. So when did you discover, Rory, you had asthma? Is it something in recent times or were you, were you born with it? Yeah, no, I, I'd say, um, listen, um, pleasure to see you. Hope you're all well, obviously. Um, yeah, no, definitely born with it. Um, I'm sure my parents will be... Uh, better to answer that than myself, but like what I was told is from a very young age, like had severe asthma um, in and out of Temple Street Hospital on numerous occasions um, with severe asthma attacks. And I have memories of the the, the mask on me, um, you know, the kind of, uh, the, the ventilator would say, like, and, and being very sick as a young fellow, just memories of that. And I suppose I became very reliant on my inhaler from a young age, like, um, you know, um, you know, if I didn't have an inhaler with me when I went to play a football match, I, I you know I'd start to panic. So, yeah, no, definitely, it, it, asthma is definitely a big part of my life, for sure. Rory, you've been very honest, and it's really important to talk about it, honestly. My own brother had asthma um, growing up, and he actually grew out of it, which I'm sure uh, Professor Marcus can talk to us more about in a moment. How did it affect your life as a child, first of all, Rory? Yeah, well, like, as I said, as a young fella, like, um, I, I would have had a bad chest. So, say, if I got uh, if I got wet playing football, I'd, I'd get an asthma, or sorry, I'd get a, a chest infection very quickly. Like, you know, I just had no immune system. And very annoying, like, as a young fella growing up playing football and that, and if I got wet at training, I literally, two days later, I'd be, I'd be out with a chest infection for a week and just had a very... Mm. You know, a very weak chest, and even growing up, uh, uh, you know, my, both my, my parents are from the country, like, and I go down there, we'd be messing on bells, hey, and I'd have an asthma attack straight away, like, and ruin the crack for all the rest of my cousins, like, having to call the parents to come out, and we'd have to get off the bells because Rory wasn't now playing them because it'd affect my asthma. So, yeah, listen, like, it, at times it was definitely a struggle to live with for sure, but it's in a good place now at the minute, and um, still take my regular inhale it once a day and the ventilator's there if we need it, but it's definitely in a much better place. Like. Good. Good to hear. And then in, in that regard, as well as affecting your physical um, health, did it affect your mental health? Because you mentioned there the anxiety you would have if you were without your inhaler or that if you felt you were ruining summer holidays for, for family. Yeah, so, like, listen, again, I'm not a psychiatrist, but this is my kind of understanding for me is uh, I have a very addictive personality, like, so if I like something, I got it, I go at 100 mile an hour, and, you know, I've openly spoke about a gambling addiction in my past, which I struggled with because, again, I just love that, that high, like, and, and I, like, I, in a way, I think it stems from my asthma because I became very reliant on my inhaler, as I said for you, when I was growing up, so, like, I remember even uh, when I was going uh, out with my wife in the early days, she lived over in Blanchestown. It would have been maybe 1920, and I went over to the house, and we were set to go to bed, and I remember that I didn't have my didn't have my inhaler in, in the bag, and, and automatically I just imagined myself getting wheezy, and, and I'd have a bit of a panic, and I'd have to go home, and I wouldn't stay the night at home, and I need my inhaler. So it definitely psychologically has a massive impact on you, and like I said, I think... I think a lot of asthmatics, um, you know, maybe listen, can relate to that, the reliant on inhaler. Like, even as we speak, I have a, I have a, I have a ventilant uh, inhaler. I have about five or six just lying around the house, and I'm definitely addicted to it. I really am, and, um, you know, it's something that I'd love to probably shake, but I've probably gone so far now um, that the thoughts of not having an inhaler around me would probably give me a panic attack, yeah. Well, there's people around the country that can absolutely relate to that. So your wife, Emma, and one of your daughters also have asthma, Rory. Is that right? 
Yeah, Emma, my wife, has asthma, and our eldest uh, daughter, Ella, um, who I'll definitely have to give a shout out to uh, people that watch Rolling Stories. We know Ella plays a big part in a lot of the videos. She's uh, she's probably downstairs listening in the kitchen now. I'm actually in her bedroom now, just um, renting her bedroom for, for this talk. So uh, she's, <laughs> she's downstairs. So uh, yeah, Ella and Emma both have asthma as well, yeah. Um, Dr. Marcus, we'll come to you in just one moment, but um, COVID obviously has been terrifying for all of us, but for particularly for people uh, who have respiratory conditions. And Rory, as you said in, in your own words on social media uh, not so long ago, it arrived at your door. How bad was it? Yeah, listen, it, it, it was scary now, I won't lie. Like, um, so Emma took, uh, kind of Paddy's Day night, she just took a turn for the worst, and she kind of knew herself. She had a face, no, this, this isn't right. And it's gas, she was painting the fence out the garden the evening before, and it got a bit cold. In other way, Osiris would blame getting a head cold off, a little change of weather taken off the top, but she knew. And within four or five days, it got worse, and unfortunately, we had to ring an ambulance for her because the, the, the pain on her chest got bad. And, and it was really worrying, like, off she went in the ambulance and I was left there with, with, with Zach and, and Ella and Lucy. And Lucy, our little baby, she, three months, she had the COVID as well. And I was trying to not get it off Lucy because with my asthma, I was worried and I was wearing a mask. And I was trying to sanitize my hands every, every time I fed her. But listen, it, it was inevitable that I was going to get it, which I did. And thankfully, I didn't have it as bad as Emma. I, I was pretty floored now for about 10 days, but not too bad, but definitely Emma. Unfortunately, he was in hospital for a week and it was, it was definitely worrying times because with COVID, it's a different animal. You don't know what way it's going to affect you. So we're just so happy to have her home now. She, she's still not 100%, but she's a lot better. She's definitely out of woods, so we're, we're delighted to have her back. Like, I um, certainly am. Anyway, I couldn't, of course I, I couldn't, you are. Couldn't we're couldn't delighted to hear <laughs> that she's on, on the path yeah. to recovery, hopefully, and as are, as are you all. Marcus, let me bring you in here because... As Rory has explained so well, you know, so many asthma sufferers will relate to that, having the inhaler in every handbag or dotted around their house or in their car. Throw COVID on top of that and you could, you could be in a very anxious position. No, absolutely. Um, Rory has very elegantly outlined, uh, the, the, you know, the distressing aspects of asthma for many people. And most people think of asthma as a trivial or mild condition, but it can be extremely serious at times. Uh, on a background of never troubling the individual too much. Um, it's a recurring inflammation disease um, with cough and wheeze and tightness and breathlessness caused by it. Now, unfortunately, a lot of those symptoms also overlap with COVID-19. And the safest thing to do is just to go and uh, get, get your swab done and get the condition ruled out and self-isolate, follow public health advice. And, uh, uh, and in terms of the actual outcomes from COVID-19 for patients who have asthma, it's quite encouraging actually, that if you're on a preventer inhaler, as Rory has mentioned, he takes it religiously every day, it's the best way to try and minimise how often you have to use your blue inhaler, your Ventolin type inhaler. We're always worried if a patient is needing the Ventolin more than twice a week. And uh, it's really important to have an asthma action plan, which helps outline steps that a patient can take to try and avoid getting into any danger territory with their asthma. Um, are, is there, like, people who are more susceptible to getting asthma, can you do uh, asthma, can you develop at any stage of life? And as Anna said in her brother's uh, case, it can go away also. Yeah, no, it's, it's an incredibly common condition, much more so in, in childhood as people would generally imagine. So it's about one in five kids in this country at some stage could have asthma, but one in 10 kids currently have asthma. And overall for the population, it's about one in 13 uh, will have asthma. But we, we in the Asthma Society of Ireland shown that 890,000 Irish people at some stage in their life will have had asthma. Um, so it, it, you can grow out of it. A majority of children, just about a majority, maybe 60, 65% of kids who develop asthma in childhood will grow out of it. But if it happens actually for the first time in adulthood, as it often does, uh, data suggests about 15% will grow out of that condition. So the vast majority of, of people in adulthood developing asthma will have it for the long term. Rory, um, I think humour has got, got you through a, quite a stressful time for you and the family. Would that be fair to say? Hi, yeah, I'm sure. Listen, without the crack, you have nothing, like, you know, and, <laughs> and, and thankfully, like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to uh, to getting back to doing doing uh, gigs and tours again because I probably have, uh, I'd say, I have two tours of material in this last year alone. I'm sure everyone can relate to just how difficult it was, you know, um, during, during that whole um, uh, lockdown, when you have uh, children, young children, like we have Zach, who's a toddler, like, and, you know, savage, uh, savage meltdowns, as people can uh, relate to. And it's tough. And, 
But listen, as I said, we're getting there. Um, I, I do believe we're on the right road, you know. And even just on that, uh, Anna, like, you know, with me and my family having uh, the COVID like that, I was amazed at the amount of messages I got privately off people saying, thanks very much for opening up that you have COVID, that, you know, we we had COVID in our local village and we felt like the plague in the village. And mm. thanks for normalising. And it's just something that I'd like to say that, like, it isn't, it's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Anyone who does, you know, get COVID or has had COVID, it's it's don't beat yourself up. It, it, listen, it, it's just this virus that's in the air. It's in the, it's in the communities. And not to blame yourself, that kind of like, uh, you know, I didn't want to lie and say, oh, I just need to break off social media. I, I, I was out straight about it. And, you know, um, I just want to normalize it. Mm-hmm. That, Nick, listen, it's it's no one's fault. Um, and also for anyone who did have COVID, I know are still struggling that now I am asthmatic, but I'm, I'm definitely fully recovered now. I'm back training and I feel I feel full of my health again. And I did feel uh, bad during them couple of weeks. So anyone who, who is struggling, you know, to hang in there, that you will get back to yourself, um, you know, no doubt about it. Because I said, I have bad asthma and I feel 100%. And Emma's a bit slower than me, but she's definitely getting there. So just to keep, keep the head up, you Brilliant. know. Reassuring words Thank for you, so many viewers. And our best wishes to Emma and also to Dr. Butler. Thank you both for being with us, lads, today. Thank you very much. I might very briefly Thanks, mention, if I can, before we go, our, our Love Your Lungs campaign on asthma.ie. We have a virtual walk this week and a conference on Wednesday. And thanks very much again. Not no at problem. all, Marcus. We have all the details here on screen as well. So thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you. Take care. Indeed. Thank you you took Thanks. the words right out of my mouth <laughs> and you can support that campaign and find out more uh, about Asthma Awareness Week. You can visit asthma.ie. Yes, after the break, more pops of colour over on the catwalk with our summer wardrobe. We're at the catwalk next. Thank you.